Win a pageant episode 48. Just like a celebrity or a professional athlete, you need a cause that's connected to your brand with a strong marketing plan and a powerful legacy project. It's called a platform. And if you don't have one yet, then this episode is for you. Hey girl, welcome to another episode of the Win a Pageant podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Darby. And in today's episode, I want to share with you the top six things that I find myself telling every pageant contestant relating to her platform. So in fact, one of our listeners, Caroline, recently featured some of these tips in an article that she wrote for the Pageant Planet. So shout out to Caroline. Thank you for that. Now, first of all, even if your pageant doesn't have a platform requirement, you still should have a platform. Okay, so listen up as I unpack these six tips. And in fact, the last one is probably the most important one of all of them. They build on each other. So I still want to say them sequentially. But the last one is the most important because most women do not do it. And it truly can make the difference between you winning and you losing. Okay, so let's dive in. The first is that your platform really should be what I call open-ended, okay? So one major downfall of pageant women's platforms is that they think that that it has to be related to an already existing organization. Now, my preference is to actually not do that. So I would never tie a contestant's platform with a very specific organization because it can be somewhat limiting, okay? So for example... If you were to say your platform is the American Heart Association, then all of the work that you do and all of the appearances that you make and everything that you speak about and if you're writing documents or whatever, you are tied to the American Heart Association. If instead you have a platform that is about heart health but doesn't directly connect you to the American Heart Association, then... You can work with the American Heart Association, but you're not limited to just that. So now you can partner with local gyms or you can attend other heart healthy events. Okay, so the reason that I recommend a very personalized platform and one that is super open ended is because really it gives you greater flexibility and you will ultimately have greater reach. Now, the second tip is that a contestant's platform must be related to her brand. It has to be connected to your brand in some way. Now, if you do not know your brand inside out, then don't even try to start thinking of a platform already, okay? Without a brand identity, your platform could appear just inauthentic or kind of lackluster. There's no connection there. So when a platform and a brand are, in fact, aligned, suddenly the judges feel an immediate connection to the contestant even if it's just a super short interview time or just on your onstage answer, okay? You really want to think about tying your platform into your brand. If you're working with a coach, this should be easy for them to do. I know for my contestants, we always start with their brand. We really get a clear handle on that and then we develop what their platform is and then we develop tip number three, which is the legacy project. Every reliable and intriguing platform has a product or a project that's based on the contestant's personal brand, and that requires her to set it up. So it can't be something that someone else does because she's got to be in charge of setting it up, but yet it has to be something that she is not required in order to be to manage, okay? So she's got to be present to set it up. She does not have to be pr- present for it to continue, And this allows for it to last far beyond her initial year of service, but yet it takes her to get it started, okay? So that's why we call it a legacy project, because this is a goal-oriented incarnation, if you will, of her platform, making it real, okay? Leaving a lasting impression on the people within her community, within her reach, and that's what leaves a legacy. So for example... Some of my clients have sparked social media movements. They've developed kits to give to school children. They've written useful or meaningful books. They've even created full businesses around their platform and around their project. So when you've got something this powerful, your interview absolutely just flies by with ease and with confidence because because the judges are genuinely interested in a project 
that you've already begun to implement, that you already is trackable with your success rate. And they actually just are salivating over that conversation. So it makes those other things just sail right by. Your legacy project also helps you to accomplish my fourth tip for you, which is marketing. Now, platforms are sort of like a business in the sense that they have to be marketed to the masses with a very clear strategy that's easily communicated to the judges. If you cannot answer the question, how will you market your platform? Outside of, of course, what everybody says, which is I'm going to be talking to the schools or I'm going to reach out on Facebook, you know, things like that. If you don't have a clear marketing strategy, then you might as well not even have a platform. The reason that people have platforms, the reason that they have a legacy project is so that they can market themselves using the legacy project in the platform as a vehicle for marketing. Okay, so these things are all interconnected. So what I want you to do is get together with your coach or even a business coach, and I want you to create an actual strategy to raise awareness or to accomplish whatever goal you are achieving. It's really not enough to just say, as Miss So-and-so, I'm going to raise awareness because it's like, well, what's that going to ultimately do, right? We really need a goal. You need a strategy that's going to help you get to that goal. And it needs to be marketed properly. It should be, of course, tied to your legacy project. That is really the keystone piece of your platform. And it should be able to cover more ground than just you as an individual person. Okay, so think outside the box, you know, just of pageantry. A lot of girls always say, I mean, the number one thing, and in fact, if you ask this yourself right now, how are you going to market your platform? The number one answer is they're going to speak in the schools and they're going to raise awareness. They're going to partner with organizations, but they have no clue who they're partnering with. They have no connections to any kind of schools. They don't even know what they're doing. And then when their year ends, everything drops because they're no longer doing it as that title holder. You got to think outside that box. You got to start thinking like a wise entrepreneur. Now, as an entrepreneur, I know that the best way to market something is what I'm going to share with you as the fifth tip. You've got to focus on the light rather than the shadow. Platforms should be something that people want to talk about. So instead of focusing on the shadow side of a cause, you've got to really focus on the light, focus on the hope. For example, instead of saying, you want to combat bullying. Instead of that, focus on being a friend. Or instead of something like domestic violence awareness, you want to focus on creating a healthy home. Right? So you want to th focus on the benefit of the solution of this problem. By simply shifting the focus to the light side of the issue, you invite conversation with anybody, especially the people that need to hear it the most. Now, listen to why this is so important. If you are marketing, for example, a platform that is attempting to combat child abuse, child abuse is a real thing and it is very dangerous and it's a very heavy subject. The person that is needing the most change is truly the abuser, right? So if you are focusing on a platform about eliminating child abuse, this is going to be a really difficult topic for somebody who is a child abuser. And not all child abuse happens from somebody who's mentally ill or somebody who is wanting to hurt a child. Oftentimes, child abuse, for example, happens because parents don't know how to properly parent or because they become overwhelmed or because they don't realize that their verbal abuse impacts a child at a very young age. So if you are wanting to truly impact child abuse, you have got to focus on the light because nobody wants to be seen as a child abuser. And those that are abusing children probably don't want to do that, but they're not going to come to you because you're combating child abuse. But they might come to you for a topic like happy parenting. If you speak to parents about how to parent happy, how to be a happy parent, if you're struggling as a parent, if you find yourself having more sad days than happy days, then this is a message for you. So if all of a sudden you shift your focus to happy parenting, now you're going to speak directly into the people that need to hear your message the most. That is the benefit of speaking to the light rather than speaking to the shadow side. And this goes for every topic, okay? Combating bullying, no one believes they're a bully. People, hurting people hurt people. 
That's the truth. So if you're talking to a bully, no one wants to be a bully, okay? They're hurt already themselves. They don't want to be a bully, but they're finding success at their own popularity or at how they feel about themselves. Their self-esteem is going up by hurting other people. If you want to speak to that person, then you would be better off speaking to the light side, which is how to make friends. The light side is just so, so important. And that brings me to the sixth and final tip for this episode, which is the one that most people struggle with, and it's the one that is the most important, and that is platform implementation. A beautiful idea is nothing without implementation. Platform implementation is so important. When somebody says that they've got a good idea, I am really happy for them. But I am not interested in hearing about it if they want to tell me what they will do. Now, I don't say this to be nasty to you, but I say this to be very real. For those of you who have coached with me before and those of you listening to this podcast long enough, you know that the way I like to speak is very honest and very truthful. I get straight to the point. I do not beat around the bush because the best way that I'm able to help you is by being very straightforward. So platform implementation is so important. As a judge, when a girl shows up in her interview and tells me all the lovely things that she will do, my ears go closed. When a woman walks into an interview and she tells me all the things she has done, now I am interested. Far too often do contestants show up to their pageant and they've done nothing and they've got all these great ideas. I I frequently, frequently will meet with people I'm sure that you can imagine this. As a pageant coach, I often get people emailing me or reaching out or they see me at an event and they pull me aside. Oh, I've got this great idea. What do you think? I am not interested in hearing about the great idea you've got. I am only interested in hearing about the things you've already done because there is a huge difference between the dreamers and the doers. And and I'm not kidding you. This is huge. The women that are actually out there accomplishing things, they are the ones that we want to hire as a pageant title holder. Everybody's got great ideas. Very few people actually implement them. When a contestant says something like, what I will do is, when I receive this title, I will, dot, 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 that's fine. And I, of course, want her to have a plan, but I need to look at the fruit that she's already bearing. If you're bearing no fruit of your labors, then what do you got to show for? Okay. The key to your platform, you've gone through your brand. It's really well connected. You've open-ended it. It's not something that's directly tied to another organization. You've got a strong, powerful legacy project that leaves a powerful legacy. You've got an excellent marketing strategy. You're focused on the light. Now, You got to actually do something. That is going to be the difference between the dreamers and the doers. That's the difference between the women who are crowned and the women who are not crowned. The key to your platform is to go out and accomplish something that you desire. Don't just give a bunch of plans and a bunch of ideas and expect to win the crown. Go out and actually do it because that, ladies, is how you win a pageant. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next Win a Pageant Wednesday. Creating powerful platforms is truly my specialty. I've helped women publish books, get sponsored YouTube channels, and partner with major corporations. If you're a doer who's ready to create a big vision platform, then email me at alicia at winapageant.com. And if you're a dreamer who's up against one of my girls, then look out because she's coming in hot. Hey there, I'm Alicia Darby, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching that last video. If you totally loved it and got something from it, would you just click subscribe right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel? Hey, I am here for you and I've got so many more trainings and videos for you. In fact, this one would be a really great one to watch next. Or if that topic doesn't interest you, then try this one. It's my most recent video training. So I think both of these would be really great for you. Thank you again so much for subscribing. I am honored to be your coach. I'll see you again soon.